Tracking rounds of rain moving across very saturated ground already sparking a flood watch and a couple of flood warnings. I'll have the latest track for you. As the rain keeps coming down, the number of accidents are going up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpot reporting a flood watch is in effect as heavy rain continues to fall across the bluegrass. It is expected to continue to continue until tomorrow before we get a brief break and then more rain to end our work week. WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell is tracking all this rainfall. I'll get it out in a minute for you there, Jim. <laughs> and there's just a lot going on out there. Flood watch and now some flood warnings coming down within the past hour for a couple of folks out to our east. But the big picture, flood watch, including everyone here in central and eastern Kentucky through tomorrow afternoon. Different times uh, as far as expiration is concerned uh, on your location. So we'll just kind of keep it general there uh, for tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. But there you see everybody covered up. The reason? Saturated ground, snow melt, last week's heavy rainfall. Remember that? We had heavy rain going into that heavy round of snow that came into the area. Right now, so far, we've picked up anywhere in central Kentucky between an inch to an inch and a half of rainfall. Lighter amounts down to our south coming in closer to an inch and even less than that out toward the east where it comes between a half an inch up to one inch of rain. And we still have a little to go. Not quite as heavy as it was a little bit earlier. We can even see that the showers are becoming a little more isolated in nature on the backside of this, so it's going to be hit and miss. But as far as the steady rain is concerned, it'll be completely out of Lexington. Within the next couple of hours, and then we'll continue pressing toward the north and east throughout the rest of the evening. But plenty of rain still out there. We go along 64. You're looking at Lexington there, and then we'll look to Winchester, Mount Sterling, Owensville, and all the way out into Moorhead along the interstate. Still tracking some of that steady rainfall, even up into Fleming County, back to Nicholas County. We move a little more toward the south, tracking that rainfall into London, Manchester, and right through Rockcastle County as well. Still pretty active and wet scene anywhere you go. We will wrap it up, but more rounds are coming and we will track that into our area coming up for you in just a little bit. All right, thank you. There is some concern in southern Kentucky with all the recent rain and snowfall leading to flooding. The Cumberland River jumped its banks and now many people are keeping a very close eye on it with a rainy week ahead. WKYT's Phil Pendleton reports on the situation in Whitley County. It's our top story at 4:30. The Cumberland River is actually receding. It is much lower than it was when I was here on Friday. You can actually see the muddy marks and how high it got just to the bottom of those steps over there. But officials say they are concerned a little bit about what the week may bring with more rain in the forecast. Tackett Creek Road near Williamsburg was one of several damaged by the flood waters within the last week. Several culverts were replaced there. The high water in most places around the city has receded, and all the roads closed have since reopened. The Cumberland River is still up, though, so much so that a lot more water is rushing over the falls. That site alone has made the tourist attraction even more so in recent days. Probably exciting to see what goes over the falls, where it be the trees or whatever. Uh, and also the falls, you know, it doesn't look very impressive right now as far as high, but everything else will make up for it. We've had a lot of people down uh, this past couple of weeks. Now, the river did not reach the levels that officials feared it would. It got up to about 28 feet. 29 was the crest they thought late last week. Much more on, though, the damage that some of the high water left coming up at 530. But for now, in Whitley County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Officials say that so far, water has not moved into any homes or businesses. All that rain caused some crashes on the roads today. Kentucky 11 in Montgomery County remains closed after a UPS tractor trailer carrying hazardous materials overturned. Mark Barber has an update on that situation and some other trouble spots. He continues our first alert weather coverage. The Montgomery County Sheriff says that he thinks that the shoulder here on Highway 11 collapsed under the driver of the UPS tractor trailer around 7 a.m. because it had been weakened by the steady rain and snow. 
According to the sheriff, the truck fell off an embankment and flipped onto its side, leaking diesel fuel out of the engine. Wet roads have been keeping crews busy across central Kentucky. In Clark County, firefighters say a woman who was driving on Rockwell Road drove into a telephone pole after she slid off the slippery street this morning. We're told she wasn't hurt, and Montgomery County officials say fortunately the UPS driver wasn't seriously hurt either. Firefighters tell us the tractor trailer was carrying empty propane tanks, pesticides, and herbicides for southern states. The sheriff tells us those chemicals haven't leaked out of the truck yet. We're looking at chemicals possibly getting in, into the water. What's on the vehicles, if it gets wet, it could give off a, 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 you know, a reaction, a chemical reaction. This would be dangerous. The sheriff says they are bringing in crews to get the chemicals off of the truck safely. Emergency management officials are working to clean up the spilled diesel fuel. They say at this point they still don't know how much fuel has spilled into the ground or if the environment has been harmed. In Montgomery County, Mark Barber, WKYT. While crews are still working to reopen Highway 11, we are told that Rockwell Road in Clark County is now open again. Well, this morning, the state held its annual tornado drill to help people prepare for severe weather. The staff at Yates Elementary School in Lexington have an even more pressing reason to get their students caught up on how to prepare for a tornado. The school is using outdoor portable classrooms, and it makes students more vulnerable to severe weather. Um, we practice drills monthly. We have a fire drill every month, and then we alternate back and forth between an earthquake drill and severe weather. So this isn't the first time that students have practiced. Um, we have to just be ready if something happens. Today's drill was initiated by the National Weather Service, who says you should begin preparing for severe weather season by activating weather radio alerts and your mobile devices. A 10-year-old Kentucky boy is the newest member of a college lacrosse team. Adam Stofflett beat cancer, and now he's signed a letter of intent to join Bellarmine University's lacrosse team. Because of the brain tumor, his family said it will be hard for him to play sports, but the lacrosse team says they will rally around him. Adam will be on the sidelines with the team at their next home game. Today, the jury in the Boston Marathon bombing trial saw a note from the suspect. It was found inside the boat he was captured in days after the explosions. Chris Van Cleve has the latest from court. Jurors were given a look inside the boat where defendant Johar Sarnayev hid before surrendering to police. Prosecutors showed pictures of the handwritten note found inside the boat. It was riddled with bullets and stained with blood. It begins, I'm jealous of my brother. I do not mourn because his soul is very much alive. God has a plan for each person. Mine was to hide in this boat and shed some light on our actions. He also says the U.S. government is killing our innocent civilians. And as a Muslim, I can't stand to see such evil go unpunished. Day four of testimony began with the defense doing something it really hasn't done in this case so far, an extensive cross-examination of a witness. Sarnayev's legal team tried to add context and downplay the significance of his social media posts. FBI agent Stephen Kimball acknowledged the ominous sounding tweets read in court Monday, including a reference to an Islamic extremist, were selected by the prosecution, not investigators. Adding much of the rest of Sarnayev's Twitter activity was mundane. The focus of the trial has shifted away from emotional stories from survivors to the account of investigators who gathered hundreds of pieces of evidence collected at the scene of the bombings. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Boston. Sarnayev is charged with 30 counts related to the bombings. He pled not guilty, but his attorney acknowledges he committed the bombings. If convicted, he faces life in prison or the death penalty. On this rainy day, we're celebrating the arts. Lex Arts is kicking off its annual fundraising drive at the Kentucky Theater. And our Deanne Stevens has the details on the fund for the arts. Hi, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. It has been a big day here in the city of Lexington, celebrating the arts in Lexington. And this beautiful young lady does that so well. Miss <laughs> Nan Plummer is president of Lex Arts. And this is a very exciting time for you guys. This is a kickoff for the whole year. It is. It's, it's a kickoff of an intense period of raising money for the arts, getting people to invest in what makes Lexington such a great community. A, a big celebration today. Tell folks all about it. Well, we had performances by a Trump quartet from the Lexington Philharmonic. The Lexington Ballet was on the stage giving us a little preview of their upcoming performance. Absolutely adorable violinists from the Central Kentucky Youth Orchestra's North Limestone Music Works. Yeah. Just wonderful 
talented performers of all ages. Well, and that really just reiterates why everybody's here, right? Right. We're here to raise awareness so that we can get folks to invest a little or a lot mm -hmm. in the arts that educate, that improve our quality of life, that draw people to Lexington and keep them here. It takes so do those donations to keep the arts in Lexington. How can folks donate and get involved? They can just go to our website, lexarts.org. If you have a workplace campaign, please consider giving to that. Call us up. Um, I'll come over and get a check. <laughs> we love to uh, engage with folks however they would like to contribute. All right, the celebration of the arts continues today at the Kentucky Theater. Nan Plummer, thank you for being with us. You can check it out for yourself and make those donations at lexarts.org. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. We are so fortunate to live in an mm -hmm. area where we have so many different things in the arts to go to. Well, Liam Neeson turns out in New York for his latest movie as a likable tough guy, and Suge Knight is hoping video evidence will help in his murder case. Suzanne Marquez has those stories and more in today's Eye on Entertainment. Suge Knight showed up in court with a new attorney and a new strategy. Surveillance video shows Knight mowing down two people with his pickup truck, but his attorney claims it also shows Knight was attacked first. Knight is due back in court March 20th for a bail hearing. Film director Randall Miller is spending two years in jail as part of a plea deal for involuntary manslaughter and criminal trespassing. A freight train killed one of Miller's camera assistants and injured six other crew members in Georgia last year. The filmmakers were never permitted to shoot on the tracks. So many memories. The Simpsons co-creator Sam Simon has died of complications from colon cancer. The 59-year-old won nine primetime Emmys for his television work and left most of his fortune to charity. The stars of Run All Night walk the red carpet in New York. The action thriller stars Liam Neeson as a former hitman forced out of retirement to protect his son. That pits him against his old boss, played by Ed Harris. It's a lot of action, but the action is all driven by the motivation of these relationships of these people. Run All Night hits the big screen on Friday. And that's your Eye on Entertainment. Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Here's a sentence you probably never thought you'd hear. Tom Hanks up sinks, lip syncs rather, Carly Rae Jepsen. The two time Oscar winner stars in her new music video for I Really Like You. It's the newest single from the Call Me Maybe singer. In the video, Hanks is seen taking selfies with fans and texting from a cab before breaking out into song and dance on the streets. There he goes. Hanks, who is a friend of Jepsen's manager, is also joined by Justin Bieber in the song. Fayette County Schools is asking for your input in the search for its next superintendent. There is a public forum at Sandersville Elementary at 6 tonight. If you can't make it to that meeting, there will be three more later this week. We have a list of the other dates and times for you. Just go to WKYT. Dot com. Everybody today, I was around talking about all that snow. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness all this rain wasn't snow because no. we'd be up to our ears. We, we would be, Jim. <laughs> it would be something else. We'd have some big drifts out there if this was snow. Fortunately, it's not. Uh, you're right. Fortunately, it's not. You know, think about some of those mounds that we saw from all of the scraping in some of these parking lots. They were six, seven feet high. How about snow that high like they had in Boston? So, yeah, we lucked out. We look outside right now at the fender. We are tracking plenty of rain right Right now, all across uh, eastern Kentucky at this moment, there's still some light stuff coming down here around Lexington, but that will eventually try to get right on out of here. But the next three days, we have a lot going on. Showers lingering out in eastern Kentucky for Wednesday. One of those stray showers might try to get into central Kentucky, but better chances there. Thursday, we bump it up to a moderate threat level due to the fact that, that rain returns late. And then on Friday, it's high because we have more heavy rains coming. Rain causing a lot of problems out there for us over the next several days. And the same thing for folks driving out there right now. On Tate's Creek Road, approaching the Lansdowne shops to the circle out to Redding Road. It's very slow outbound right now. It looks like the problem, the right lane has been moved out of the way, but we're still paying for it. Also, Newtown Pike, a 15-minute delay from New Circle to the interstate, just to give you an idea what we're dealing with on the north side. And on the circle itself, Winchester Road over to Richmond Road. It is solid bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. Now back to you in the studio. 
to become a WKYT Live Driver and download the Waze app, go to WKYT.com. Under the News tab, click on Traffic for more information. Trash turned into treasures, an archaeological find, and a unique topic in the classroom. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this. A man in Minnesota is turning trash into treasure, and it's causing his neighbors to stop and stare. Dale Lewis started making sculptures by reusing, reusing things like motorcycle mufflers and old cell phone towers. Some people stop by and take pictures with the creations in St. Paul. Lewis started following his dream after the housing market crashed. And now his artwork will become part of an annual sculpture walk in Minnesota. Archaeologists have discovered thousands of skeletons buried in the path of a London train line. Most of the remains were buried in the 16th and 17th centuries. The bones will be tested before being reburied at a London cemetery. Scientists hope to learn more about how Londoners lived hundreds of years ago, as well as the bubonic plague that killed many of them. And a music school teaching students the art of DJing in Indianapolis is hoping to go beyond the classroom. Decademics is partnering up with one school in the city to give students an option to explore their musical talents. Nick Salego is the owner and has been a professional DJ for over 10 years. He says the idea for the school started after he graduated from college when he worked for an after school program. I bet you that's a very yeah. popular class. Something very cool there. Would have been interested kids. in something yeah, like that. Absolutely. All right, stick with us. Here's what we're working on for you now at five o'clock.